Hey guys, what's up? This is your friend and tutor Manas and it's going to be yet another session in this lecture series on engineering mechanics. Well, today we're going to be taking up one more problem on dynamics. So here it is. Well, first of all, I would suggest all of you to pause the video and go through this description, right? Okay. Now let me explain you what this arrangement is all about. So there are essentially three blocks, A, B, and C. Their weights have been given to us. That's 150, that's 450, and that's 300 Newtons. Now guys, you can clearly see that A and C are connected by one single string this way. Okay, passing over three pulleys. And we can actually make a judgment that if A goes down, C goes up and vice versa. This pulley over here, where this block B has been suspended. All right. So essentially, the things that we need to determine in this problem are the individual accelerations of block A, block B, block C, and also the tension in the string. Okay, let's say the tension be represented by T, simple. So we have to essentially work with four variables and for solving four variables, need to, we need to frame four equations. All right, so let's see how this can be accomplished. Well, the entire solution to this problem has been divided into three basic steps. In step one, we'll determine the direction of motion. We'll try to work out whether this block A goes down or goes up. Okay, whether this block C goes up or down. This is the stuff that we're going to do in step number one. Then in step two, what we'll try to do is we'll try to develop a sort of relationship in terms of acceleration and velocity between all the three blocks, A, B, and C. And then finally, in step number three, we'll do the motion analysis individually of all the three blocks, A, B, and C, and we'll be framing equations, which is going to be very helpful to let us know what the accelerations of individual blocks are and also the tension developed in the string. So let's go ahead with the direction of motion. Now guys, first thing, assume the case of static equilibrium, static equilibrium, everything is static right now, nothing moves, right? In that case, this B over here is having a weight of how much? This is, uh, let me check, 450, 450 Newtons. So over here, the weight, this is the counter force 450. This pulley is being pulled by a force of 450 and 450 will be divided by two over here and over here. So over here, you can say that the tension is 450 divided by two. Let me check how much it is. It should be equal to 225 if I'm not wrong, but let me check it in a calculator. Okay, that's 225. So the tension in this portion of the string is how much? That's 225 Newtons. And over here also, it's 225 Newtons. So this is the same string. 225 newtons and this is the same string here also we're going to have the same force tension force assuming everything is static okay under the dynamic case the tension is going to be different and that tension is over here and that is something that we'll work out we'll try to determine anyways so when you speak of block a the weight of block a is 150 newtons and when you speak of block c the weight is how much that's 300 newtons so first of all let us do the analysis on block A. It's going to be very simple. Now guys, watch carefully. Either the forces are upwards or the forces are downwards. F D O, F up and F up and or F D O. So we'll try to work out the force in up direction and the force in down direction. Okay. So whichever side has maximum number of forces or the maximum magnitude of force, the block will move in that direction. So upwards we have how much? 225. Downwards we have how much? It's 150. That's pretty much obvious. And from this comparison, you can actually say that F up is more than F down. So where is this block A going to move? In the upward direction. And if block A moves in the upward direction say with an acceleration a a then obviously this block c will move in the downward direction with an acceleration of a c so a moves up c moves down that's it so that's the result that we've got from the analysis of block a well you can carry out the same analysis on this block c also let me show you you're going to get the same result block c again either the force will be up or the force will be down so this is up and that's down d o so let's see how much f up is f up is how much this is 225 and f down 
is how much it's um equal to 300 newtons 300 newtons both of them in fact and you can make a comparison f down is more than f up which is a clear indication that c is going to go downwards okay c is going to go downwards and which in turn will allow a to move in the upward direction so these two stuffs these two results finally from both the analysis of block a as well as block c are pretty much same so you don't have to worry about that but the issue is with block b we don't know whether block b is going to go upwards or downwards so right now i'll make an assumption for block b and that assumption is i'll say the let block b move in the downward direction and we'll carry out this entire analysis we'll try to develop a relationship between accelerations and then we'll be framing equations with the help of newton's second law of motion and then finally we'll be getting the values of t ac ab and a well for aa and ac the directions are correct no problem but problem is with block c now if accelerations work out with a negative sign then the direction that you chose was incorrect okay the magnitude will be same and if the value of ab that is for acceleration for block b works out with a positive sign then the direction that you chose was absolutely correct all right so first of all what i am going to do is i'll take block b or assume block b to be moving in the direct in the downward direction all right and i'll do the entire analysis i'll calculate all these values and then at the end of the video you will see a solution where i have taken the direction of block b in the upward direction okay so there will be a changed acceleration relationship and there will be a changed motion analysis slightly changed but the answer is going to be same all of these answer are going to be same okay so let's kick off so essentially let me make this benchmark and uh let it be here let's say this portion of the string is represented by x let's say this portion is represented by y and over here let's say it's z so if we were to work out the overall length of the string it would be x plus y plus y plus z so the overall length of the string can be written as x plus 2y plus z and what we'll do is we'll differentiate this with respect to time so dl over dt is equal to dx over dt 2 times dy over dt plus dz over dt now with respect to time there is no change in the length of the entire string it remains same so differentiation or the derivative of a constant you know very well is equal to zero now let's work out dx over dt you know very well that dx over dt is nothing but the velocity but we need to work out whether this is a positive change or a negative change so guys if you watch carefully block a is moving in the upward direction so this portion of the string will reduce okay and therefore you have to use a negative velocity so if the string length decreases and that rate of change is negative velocity and if the string length increases that rate of change is positive okay hence a positive velocity so you can essentially write this as negative of v a two times of v b and here it will be v c but what sign you need to work that out we know that or we are assuming that b is moving in the downward direction with say with an acceleration of ab so if it moves in the downward direction this portion of the string this y portion will obviously increase so it's a positive change plus sign this portion all right this portion again this is going downwards with an acceleration of ac again it's a positive change since this length of the string will be increased gradually increase and that positive rate of change is velocity so that's it i can actually tweak this in a better way va minus 2vb minus vc is equal to 0 and if you differentiate this further with respect to time you are going to have the acceleration relationship aa minus 2ab minus ac is equal to 0 an extremely important relationship which i am going to be using to compute all these values okay all right let me go ahead and check right absolutely perfect now let's go ahead for step number 3 okay so we are going to carry out an individual motion analysis over here well obviously tension t downwards it's the weight acting how much 150 newtons 
so where is the motion going on well a is moving upwards c is moving downwards b is also moving downwards ac ab and that's ea where is a going this way aa all right so since all the forces are vertical in nature summation of all the forces in y direction is equal to mass acceleration for block a for block a so what's next so we have this where is the motion happening this direction upwards which force is dominating that means t is dominating t should be taken as positive and all the further forces this 150 newton since it is opposite has to be taken in the negative sense so t minus 150 is equal to ma ma is equal to weight over g weight is how much 150 over g into acceleration a so i can write this essentially as aa is equal to t minus 150 into g over 150 that's it now here the tension is t even here the tension is t and that is going to be a sum of these two tensions that is 2t and the weight is obviously going to act in the downward direction and that's how much that's 450 and apart from that this block has been assumed to move in the downward direction with the acceleration of ab okay so this is where the motion is happening so the force along the direction of motion is 450 take it as positive and take this 2t as negative since it is opposite to the direction of motion so again same stuff summation of all the forces in y direction mass acceleration block b block b and then pretty simple 450 okay minus 2t is equal to mass how much is it 450 over g 450 over g multiplied by acceleration b well that's it okay and now from this equation you can actually work out ab will be equal to 450 minus 2t over again 450 whole multiplied with g so that's acceleration ab in terms of tension t now let's go ahead and work out same motion analysis for block c that's tension t that's the weight 300 newtons and where is the motion happening well in the downward direction with an acceleration ac again we have this summation of all the forces in y direction is equal to mass acceleration c c and uh, <clears throat> where is the motion happening in the downward direction so the force in the downward direction is 300 take it as positive and any force in the upward direction take it as negative so 300 minus t is equal to what 300 over g that's the mass okay into ac so ac essentially can be written as 300 minus t over 300 times of g right okay so we have got all the values of acceleration in terms of tension t so what i'll do is i already had this relationship of accelerations so let me rewrite this where is it gone let me check a a minus 2 ab minus ac this is the relationship i'm talking about a a minus 2 ab minus ac so let me write it over here a a minus 2 ab minus ac is equal to 0 so you just need to put all these values okay and from all these values g is can be taken as common so it's t minus 150 over 150 minus 2 times of 450 minus 2t over 450 and what else is there again a minus sign and this ac all right so 300 minus t over 300 and that's it all of this will be equal to 0 you just need to solve this equation and the final value of t obtained will be equal to 212 newtons approximately okay and when you put this value of t here here and here you are going to get the corresponding values of accelerations a b and c let me tell you how much those values have worked out a a works out as 4.05 meters per second square obviously then ab works out as 0.57 again meters per second square and ac works out as 2.88 meters per second square 
So guys, this is exactly how calculations can be made when we are supposed to find the value of tension T and accelerations of individual masses. And if you want to know um, what happens if the direction of block B is assumed upwards, check this out. Okay, this is the complete solution. And I'm sure it will be beneficial. And I would encourage all of you to do the solution in this manner also, both these solutions. And here in this solution, you will find that the acceleration of block B has worked out with a negative sign, which is a clear indication that the direction that we chose, that means in the upward direction was incorrect. The correct direction is in the downward sense. That's it. So guys, that was all from my side for today. If you've got any doubt or query, do write them down in the comment section below. I'll be very happy to answer them. And if you believe that this video tutorial has added value to your knowledge of engineering mechanics, then do share and like this video, subscribe to this channel and also press the bell icon so that whenever I upload a new video, you get a notification, you get an update. And also tell your friends about this channel so that they can also benefit. Well, I'm going to be back with more such videos on drawing and mechanics. Until then, it's a wrap. This is Manas Patnaik signing off. Take care, have a great day and keep learning.